Right folks, so this is the wildlife pond, um, all finished, done, dusted, planted up. As you can see, Nelly loves it, she's forever just playing in it, drinking out of it. She just loves, I don't know what it is, but she just loves, she don't get in, but she just loves having a drink and sticking her nose in it and just basically she's forever fiddling about in it as you can see by all splashes all the way down she'll drop a ball in it and it'll take her an hour to get it out but she just loves it so i'm really pleased uh, i've planted around there's some fox gloves nearly walking all over it but they're all robust stuff that's in there there's fox gloves and cosmia um you can just see there there's some irises that's just normal flag iris then there and down here in that corner there that's a lobelia it's like a tall lo blue lobelia um actually it could be a red lobelia i think one's red and one's blue but anyway um i've put loads of perennial geraniums around the back and lupins and ivy and i'm not going to be too tidy with this planting you know when it dies down it went i'm just going to leave it because this is for wildlife i'm just topping it up whilst i'm down here just because it's been so sunny and warm uh, it don't leak or anything it's absolutely fine so i've got plenty of pond weed in there um, and the king cup the marsh marigolds they're beautiful so that's it finally finished uh hopefully next year i was a bit too late to get any frog spawn um so i'm gonna try and get some tadpoles from just have loads of places around here where i can get tadpoles um so i'm gonna get some tadpoles and put some tadpoles in it so within a few years they should be coming back but i would think next year frogs will find it anyway so right folks so thank you for watching this little series of videos um I'm going to have to get somebody to help me to put them all together because there's quite a few. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll make this the first one and then, sorry she's just playing about again. I'll make this the first video and then I'll follow on with how I've done it. Okay, cheers, bye bye for now. Right folks, start of the wildlife pond. Um, I'm going to have to raise the ground up. Um, I'm having, I've started digging, I'm having to actually dig with an axe. There's that many roots here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig a small hole in the middle, about, well, as deep as I can get it really. And then, as you can see at the front here, I've put some boards across and I've raised it up. So what I will actually do is I will actually build the soil up around the pond. So it'll be a bit of a raised area. Sorry about the wind, it is really windy. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just keep doing little videos as I'm going along. Um, and I'll do sort of a, a video diary of just the wildlife pond. Um, I have been doing other stuff in the plot, but um, I'll just keep videoing this. Okie doke. Right, I hope you can see this because it's really bright. So what I've done is I've just, I've dug down about 8 to 10 inches and then I've built up about 12 inches. So, done is I've just built up with just old pallet wood because you're not going to see it so at the front it's proper sort of 3b2 edging that tantalized and then all I've done around in a well, 50 b piece type shape um, is I've just made a support that will hold back the soil because I'm going to fill in with soil all the way around Plant. Now I've put a, an inner shelf because I'm going to put plants inside as well. Some irises and things. So although it's sort of a big lump of it, water for the size of area that there is, there's gonna you probably gonna only be sort of about the middle bit there that's going to actually be water because it's going to be full of water plants, which is it's for nature. It's not for me. But what I am going to do at this end here. I'm going to put a bit of decking on so I can just park my backside and sit and because I, I am a bit sad I do like sitting and looking in water. <laughs> so that's it for now. I'm 
just uh, tomorrow hopefully I've just got to get a bit more pallet wood for here and then I'll fill it all back in and I'm going to line it with carpet some old carpet because there are some if you can just see like along there and the end of my chubby fingers there's roots and they are a bit sharp I'm going to trim them back and, but if I line it with carpet um, not only proper carpet so it's nice and strong and then I'll put uh, a bit of a thin underlay on top of that just to neaten it up and then I'll put a liner I haven't decided whether I'm going to buy a proper butyl liner or I'm just going to get some black visqueen a bit like that blue stuff there um, probably just the black visqueen because if it leaks a little bit it don't matter it don't matter if it goes up and down you're not I'm going to do it so you shouldn't be able to see any edging uh, I am actually going to edge it in the log um, pancakes if you imagine a tree cutting sections little thin all around the top um, I am actually going to edge it with slices of log so it should look nice um, I will make sure animals can get in and out there'll be some little, uh, logs inside it there'll be some bricks inside it and all sorts okay on to the next bit right folks so the little wildlife pond um, it's now ready for the liner so what I've done is if you remember I've built it up rather than dug down I've dug a small hole in the middle just to give me a bit more depth and I will just sort of angle them down a little bit I've put three layers three thicknesses of wood all the way around to build up the walls to make them strong and then on top I've put um, it's sort of the three and a half inch by one and a half inch timber so I've put a ring of timber all the way around the top and the reason I've done that is once I've put the liner in so the liner will come up and over I'm going to need some way of fixing down the liner so I'm going to use uh, discs of tree basically discs that are going to come off some of them branches up there so I'm going to cut the branches into little pancakes into discs and then I'm going to screw through the disc through the liner and into this top ring so rather than having stones around it it'll have like wooden discs like tree discs of tree so right next one hopefully we'll be onto the liner right folks so I'm a bit out of breath I've been mixing cement so it's been a while but the next installment on the wildlife pond now I've cleared out all the soil formed a couple of sort of little shelves in the dirt and I've put chicken wire all round the wooden frame and the bottom reason being I'm rendering it as you can see sand and cement render and reason being is I've got a half a tub of pond paint still left over from my pond at home so it just seemed a shame to waste it I had loads of sand and cement down here for doing for flagging and patioing and I'd, I'd bags and bags down here so I thought I might as well give it a couple of coats of render and paint it and then at the end of the day if it doesn't work oh hello Nelly if it doesn't work I can just shove a liner in and because the you know the, the pond will be formed so as you can see I've put uh, chicken wire all the way around and in the bottom and I'm just doing a sand and cement render the sand and cement render is just one part cement to five parts really coarse building sand if you're doing rendering you should really be using a, a coarse sand like a sharp sand a river sand or down here we have really coarse building sand and also and you can see in this bag fibers these are rendering fibers and how they work I'll just grab some out of here in this bucket of water is once you put them in water they expand and just all individual little glass fibers in your water and it makes for like tiny reinforcing bars in the mix so I'm just putting it on really roughly at the moment because this is going to be the first coat so I'll crack on and uh, I'll be back to you in a more right folks so the pond has now had its first coat of render 
I'll just kneel down, get down here. I mean, I've left a little hole in the bottom just in case it rains and it'll soak away. Um, I can soon cover that up when I do the next coat. Um, I'll probably do two or three coats. If you can see, I've left it rough. I've scratched it with just like a sort of comb thing. Um, and you just rough it up so that the next coat that you put on has something to stick to. You can put some PVA, like the PVA glue, you can put some PVA on it if you want it to help it to stick together. But to be honest, if you do it within like 24 hours, there's enough moisture left in. So, just stand back a bit. So there we go. And that's render coat number one. I'll be back tomorrow to do the next one. Right folks, this, I'm sorry if there's a little bit of wind noise because it is a little bit windy. Um, we're uh, it's Sunday now, we're back on uh, rendering the little pond. Um, I'm on with the second coat now. Um, don't worry about getting it too neat, just, just whack it on. Um, I found a bit of river sand, I didn't realise I had some bags of river sand, so I'm just using a bit of river sand as well. Like I say, for render, you want really coarse sand because you want the render to have some body. Like in concrete, you put ballast, you put little pebbles. That's what gives it the body and the strength. If you use really fine sand on render, there's, there's nothing to sort of link together, there's nothing to hold together, there's no body in it. So although I'm using a really coarse building sand, I have found some river sand, so I'm just going to put that in as well because it doesn't matter what colour it is because it changes it a bit darker. But it doesn't matter. So whenever rendering it wants to be nice and coarse. So that's it. I'm just cracking on with the second coat. Right folks, so sorry if it's a bit windy again. It's had its second coat on. Uh, I've scratched it. Um, so it left it rough and I've just started to put the second layer of chicken wire on. Um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a good few layers of chicken wire and sand and cement because I want this shell to stay there once the wood's rotted away. Um, <clears throat> that's that's my idea basically. I'm making a, a basin in the ground out of concrete so when the wood rots away it'll be self-supporting. So I need to put enough render on and around so I'll do several coats so that's where we are now just finish stapling this netting down all the way around on the bottom if you do it quickly like this was done yesterday um, whilst it's still what they call green as in within 24 hours you can staple into it once it another day and it'll be off and I won't be able to staple into it after so I just I would have to sort of drill and screw or plug into it so I'm just trying to get the mesh on whilst it's still green whilst it's still soft enough for me to, to staple it on okay folks bye bye for now right folks so as you can see the pond has now had its final coat of render what I did first was if you can see this nice thick it's actually 6x2 tannalized timber um, I fixed that together and all the way around apart from the fat finger in there because that's where it will overflow and also where I'm going to make it sort of stony so the uh, and if anything drops in or anything an edge of falls in or anything falls in it just can crawl out um, I know it looks deep and steep size but I'm actually going to pile rocks up there um, <coughs> or plants or whatever just so they can get out so it's had its final coat of render it's now ready to i'm just going to let it dry for a bit um, it's, there's no forecast any rain today but i've got all these frames here so i can stack the frames on put some polythene on top of the frames um, and cover it over so and it's ready for the pond paint that i've got uh, this is this is at least two inches thick 50 millimeters thick five centimeters however you want to call it thick all the way around here um, reinforced with three layers of chicken wire the bottom is three inch thick so that i can stand in it um, if i need to stand in there so it's reinforced uh, rendered like i said i'm going to paint it with this sort of rubberized pond paint i've got left over from my own pond um, so that's the next stage Okay, thanks for now. Right folks, I'm really sorry about the, the wind noise. So I'll just flick it very quickly. So, 
sorry, just bear me a second. I'm ignoring someone. Um, I've given it a coat of paint, the rubberized paint that I had. I was going to give it two coats, but it was that thick. I literally just put one really thick coat on and I've left it nearly, about nearly a fortnight. As you can see, it's got the wooden ring down and it's got the tied up. And it's not there with paint, I'm just filling it up out of my rainwater butt there. So I'm just going to put, I'm just going to fill it about half full out of there to forecast a bit of rain. I'm going to let it fill right up to the top, give it a good scrub uh, because once this goes hard, this, although it's a rubberized paint, it's not hard, you can get washed, I'll get washed when I come down. So I'm going to give it a wash, uh, empty it completely, then I'll crack on with the plants. Okay, doc. Bye for now. Right folks, so there's lots of ways of making ponds on allotments. You can just dig a hole and put polythene in. I just wanted it to be a bit more robust, last a lot longer. Um, and the reason I concrete is because I want to be able to walk around. So I've put this, sorry my man coffee. I've put the boardwalk all the way around and it is solid, it's secure. I can walk all the way around the back of the pond, get to any of the plants, get to the wall. Um, I'm gonna put more ivy in. So, right folks, thank you very much for following this and watching this. Um, it's a, a little video um, amongst itself. It's not, you know, I'll do this separately and, and I've added them all together. So I hope you enjoyed seeing how I've done it. Nelly likes it, as you can see. Bye bye for now.